Hello. Ooh, it's funny. Thank you for that introduction. That was the fanciest introduction I've ever had. Um, so I'm going to try my best to share with you a story that's taken pretty major priority over my life for the last 548 days. But first, I want to acknowledge three very important words that bring us all here today. Beds are burning. 27 years ago, I came into this world. Uh, 27 years ago, one year before I came into this world, our very own Midnight Oil released incredible Beds Are Burning track out into the open in protest for giving native Australian lands back to its indigenous people. 26 years later, two degrees down and a good five years of world stomping under my belt, I found myself experiencing firsthand what the word rape really meant when travelling solo through Mexico. Now, you could very well assume stupid girl for going on your own. And yes, some part of me could agree to this, but I'd really like to make it very clear that having lived overseas and experienced very different, various different uh, continents for the larger part of five years, travelling and doing it alone was not a new thing to me. To cut a long story short for the purpose of this talk, at the end of 2012, I travelled to Mexico to visit a dear friend of mine who lived in Monterey. After this, I planned to take on Latin America and booked a bus to take me from the top of Mexico down to the bottom, right through to South America, to the very finish line that would be Costa Rica. Only two weeks into the joys of Mexico and getting my Frida Kahlo fix, I found myself in an area at the south of Mexico called Palenque, where I was very excited about making the most of the advertised cabanas fit for just one person, rather than the usual sardine can-like dorms for eight, 10 or 12 people. Basically, this night of planned bliss and restoration turned into the worst night of my life when the man who I trusted to run the hostel, he owned the keys to the hostel, all the rooms, cooked the meals in the hostel, poured and served the drinks in the hostel, made the very conscious decision to drug and rape me. This is an experience that does not need bare the nitty details to you all here. But let's just say I quickly pieced the event together over the following days through photo montage flashbacks and the very visible assessment of physical injury to my entire body. What I slept was an early sober night in very quickly became an event that would change me and the meaning of my life forever. Soon after, I was back home in Sydney for a little R&R, &R, and I just thought I'd tackle this trauma head on with a few doses of alcoholic anonymous sessions as such, but tailored solely for the survivor of rape. I've searched far and wide for support groups such as this, conversations and cups of teas with other survivors, even just an online guide onto what these feelings might mean. And 100, 548 days into it, I've had no such luck. I'd also like to briefly mention that on my return and since, I've had only one person in my life ask me how my holiday was. I felt like the elephant in the room and thus begun my very first acknowledgement of the terrible taboos that surround rape today. So, left to my own device, as I shacked up in my studio and began a drawing a day, I had just three rules, no eraser, no scrunched paper, and no giving up, one drawing per day. So I popped it on Facebook, and although I'm not a big fan of social media, this was to help me live by my third rule. I thought at least one pair of eyes watching me would force me, even on a bad day, to draw that bad day, to put that feeling on a blank page with colour and ink, to refine the edges, to add a circle or a line or a triangle or a square, a moustache, a beard, a lyric, a word, a Frida or a sweetheart. I thought it, uh, my name is, no, to put that feeling, that dark emotion I could not comprehend in real life on a piece of paper and to make it colourful, to bring it alive, express it, share it and then to let that feeling go, recognise it and move on. This exercise very quickly became my mantra, my therapy, my homemade resource and my absolute saving grace as to why I'm here today. This is my positive protest. My name is Meg Minkley and I'm the artist behind a drawing a day and not ever beyond my wildest dreams did I think a drawing a day might mean anything to anyone else but myself. But I'm glad that it has because I just want to say to you all, rape happens. I recently had a show to celebrate 365 days of a drawing a day, to raise awareness and give a voice to the scary, commonplace sexual, has, sexual assault has in our society, and most importantly, to honour the colours that saved me and continue to. I also wanted to share my resources with other survivors of rape, 
So I gave crowdfunding a go to make this possible. And by the end of five weeks, over 150 other women from ages 12 to 89 years old broke their own silences with me. Women not just from here, but from Mexico, South America, America and Europe. When sitting down to think about what I might like to share with you today, I looked up the word protest and found that it is described as a statement or action expressing disapproval of, a, of or objection to something. I don't really like the description of protest, but would rather announce that I'm in positive protest. I'm expressing an action to improve the way society accepts, understands and views rape and sexual assault in our world today, because it is just as common and important as cancer, alcoholism, drugs and drink driving. I'm in favour of talking about rape. I'm protesting for the creation of the resources that are so desperately needed for us survivors. I'm in celebration, a dance, a messy rumble with colour to break these ridiculous taboos that surround rape today. I'd like to diminish the means of second victimisation. When you experience such a crime, you feel worthless. When society does not how, know how to address the issue, even by simply asking how your holiday was, that worthlessness is further instilled, if not more fiercely, as it is a result of your own kind. This is second victimisation. This is the elephant in the room, and this is such an easy thing to stop if we start sharing this conversation in the right way. The stats say one in three women experience sexual assault in their lifetime, and one woman dies every week from domestic violence. But if 90% of them are silent, and rightly so, I might add, Nobody wants to be the elephant in the room. I've experienced enough emails to safely say that these stats would have to be one in two. This brings me to the line in the oil song, how can we dance when our earth is turning? How do we sleep while our beds are burning? I'd like to ask you this, how can we close our eyes and pretend that nothing is happening when in fact the situation is dire? My art saved me. Your words and the language we choose to use can save somebody else. Forget victim, let's remember the survivor. Forget taboo, let's start acceptance. I'm one of the lucky ones. My experience does not entail my father, brother, husband, colleague or friend. It is not a face I need to see again. It is a memory I can choose not to relive. Others are not so lucky. So this is my protest. Rape happens. Let's wake up. Because really, how can we sleep when our beds are burning? And how can this change if we don't start talking? Thanks. <laughs>